Have you ever wondered what would happen if you took the largest glass jar you could find, you hiked it down to your local swamp, then you took your favorite soup spoon and just started shoveling in all the mud and muck and slime and swamp stuff you could find, then you topped it off with a whole bunch of swamp water, you closed the lid and you let it sit for seven days? Well, today we're going to find out. Delicious. So join me as we watch this jar change and grow over the next seven days. Day one, it begins. The first thing I notice is there's a whole bunch of this green algae stuff on the surface of the water. There's also a pretty thick layer of dirt and mud on the bottom. It definitely looks like there's slight movement on the surface of the algae, or maybe it's just the algae settling. A little while later, I check the dirt, and it looks like there's some small little tubes or lines showing up. Throughout the night, I set up a time lapse of the jar to see if I saw any movement, and to my surprise, there was actually quite a bit of movement. It looks like tiny little worm-like creatures sticking their heads out of the algae layer. Day 2. I woke up pretty surprised to find a bunch of tiny worms stuck to the side of the glass. I also noticed a small little bug of some sort digging its way through all the worms. I believe these are called tube effects worms, and it seems like they like to cluster with each other into big groups. The end of day 2, the water's still pretty murky, but it looks like there's quite a bit of worms going on. Day 3. It definitely looks like there's slightly more worms crawling around. I set up a time lapse of the floor and to my surprise, there was a lot of life going on. The footage of the dirt's honestly some of my favorite footage of this whole thing. It's like the worm highway system. So cool. The water is still pretty murky and there's a whole lot of little things floating around inside of it. Day 4. Definitely looks like there's even more worms today and it looks like there's quite a few more little bugs crawling around as well. Here's a nice close up time lapse of the worms going through the dirt. I find it pretty interesting, there's all these tiny little bubbles that they're crawling around and the bubbles don't even pop, they're kind of just stuck there hovering in place as the worms just slither on by. It was at this point that I remembered I had a small little electronic microscope, thought it'd be perfect for filming some of this really up close stuff. So these are the worms up close, you can see their bodies are very elastic like and on both sides of them there's these very small little clusters of baby white worms as well. I also managed to briefly catch one of the water bugs, and then a few more shots of the worms crawling through the dirt. They just look so long. It's the end of day four, the water's still pretty cloudy looking, but there's definitely a lot more movement around the surface of the water, and a lot of very tiny small things swimming around as well. Day five. Definitely the most amount of worms so far, there seems to be more and more clusters of them on the surface of the algae. There also seems to be a large brown clump of worms just floating on the water surface. I also noticed there's a couple snails hanging on the side of the glass. Here's a small little one hanging out by himself. I took out the microscope again and this is what the snail looks like under it. And it's cool, you can actually see its little tongue licking the sides of the glass. And here it is again except zoomed in even further and you can really see its tongue going at it. This is the end of one of the worms. And you can see to the side of it there's all these very tiny little creatures just swimming around. I have no idea what they are and they're just so small. I also found this little tiny cyclops creature. It's like a little grain of rice, but even smaller. You can see the size of it compared to one of the worms on the right side of the screen. I also ended up getting a really nice close-up of one of the water bugs, and I learned something pretty interesting and unique. Somehow they trap a huge bubble of air on their underside, and they can walk around underneath the water with it, and they must breathe from it. That's pretty cool, and I never knew this really existed. It's kind of like if humans, when we went swimming in the water, a giant bubble formed around our heads and we could just breathe in it. I think it's pretty cool. You can also see the other bug tried to get on camera as well. This is the other water bug that I found in there. This one doesn't seem to have a trapped air bubble underneath it, but something I did find interesting is somehow they can climb along the glass when it's wet and slippery and they don't fall. They must have like super spider grip and I think that's impressive. This is a super close up of his head. You can see its eyes with all the little segments and you can also see its tiny little antenna. Just crawling around. Here's a time lapse of everything floating in the water and then here's another time lapse of the worms crawling their way through all the dirt. I just think it's so cool to see them move through it. Definitely reminds me of like an ant colony. Day 6. Definitely looks like the water starting to clear up a little bit and there seems to be more and more worms by every single passing day. There also seems to be an explosion in the snail population. There's a lot of them on the side of the glass today. And here you can watch some of the snails just zoom around as they travel. 
it seems that a couple more brown clusters of worms are floating on the surface today, and this is what it looks like in real time. Very slow moving. I busted out the microscope again today, and I pointed it right at one of the clusters of worms on the sides of the wall. And it's just absolutely bizarre to see these things slither around, and their bodies are sort of transparent. I found this little tiny white clear worm, and you can see the size comparison between the larger red worms. You can see two of them sliming by in the background. I found some more of these little shrimp-like cyclops creatures. I believe these ones are called copepods. They are very interesting like little whisker things. There's also these round ones that I found the other day. I think there's something different, but the round ones are very interesting as in they have like this little tongue protrusion or arm that they stick out of their front side or mouth. And you can see them actually like punching at the water or trying to catch these little tiny particles and creatures floating by. I find them so interesting and I can't even imagine what it would be like to be them. So it turns out all of the little particles floating in the water that I thought was like plant debris, it's actually hundreds or thousands of little tiny worms just swimming about. There's got to be so many worms in here. I got another close up of a water bug and again you can see the little air pocket that's trapped underneath it and I think that is just the coolest thing. It's the end of the sixth day and man there's got to be so many worms inside of here. I just think it's incredible. I had no idea where they came from. Was it the mud? Was it from the water? I don't know. Day 7. Man, there is a lot of worms in here. They are larger, they are bigger, they are crawling up further on the glass, and there's a lot of this like white slime around them. So it turns out it's not just slime. It's in fact hundreds and hundreds or thousands and thousands of small little translucent worms. The worms were definitely multiplying at incredible rates. I never expected so many things to be alive inside of here. I expected maybe a bug or two or like a little plant or something, but this is just absolutely wild. Here's some more of the worms up close, and they look so strange and interesting. Like if someone showed you a picture of this, you probably wouldn't even think it's worms, maybe like stained glass or something. Here's another one of the water bugs up close with its tiny little antenna. It also seems to have some interesting legs and very, very spiky little elbows. Here's some more of the tiny little clear worms next to the big ones. And I found next to it a tiny little community of, I don't even know what they are, such small little floating grains of rice. They're, look how small they are even compared to the small clear worms. So crazy. I also found a new type of creature, some sort of insect I'm guessing. It has like an interesting tail with like feather-like structures. It also has like a segmented body, almost like a caterpillar or inchworm. I have no idea what it is, but it's just stuck on the side of the glass. There's definitely a lot more water bugs than when I started this jar as well. And the copepods just look so cool. And I also found this super, super tiny little insect. I have no idea what it is. Definitely the smallest insect that I've seen in here though. I'm not really sure what these white things are next to the worms either. I found another one of those little tiny ball creatures next to some worms. It's just crazy to think they have to live their lives trying to avoid these giant huge worms. It's so crazy. Well, it's the end of the seventh day and this thing has so many worms and bugs living inside of it. It's absolutely wild. I can't believe how many things came out from that swamp. I think it's time to return these creatures back to where they came. So what did I learn from these past seven days? I learned that life is resilient and it's everywhere. And I'm super amazed at how many things were actually alive and living inside of this jar. I expected just a few things not to breed a whole colony of worms. I can't even imagine how many worms must live inside that swamp. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and keep on keeping on.